when we talk about basic microphone patterns, what we're talking about is the directions in which a microphone listens for a sound source. For example, an omnidirectional microphone is designed to pick up sound sources in a 360 degree area from everywhere. Now, it does still matter where an omni mic is pointing, because even though the pickup pattern is technically 360 degrees, the most balanced frequency response is from the front of the microphone. So it makes sense to aim the omni mic toward your primary sound source. Some other traits of the omni mic, unlike the directional microphone, which we'll get to in a minute, the omni mic has no proximity effect. And this means you can put an omni mic mere inches away from the strings of a grand piano, and the extremely close proximity of the microphone will not cause the low bass frequencies to be exaggerated in the same way that the design of a directional mic boosts the lows when they're used very close to a sound source. Omni mics are also known for capturing a very natural bass response in general, often more dynamically than the directional microphone. Engineers who record art music usually consider a spaced pair of omni mics to be one of the warmest sounding stereo techniques. The unidirectional, directional, or cardioid mic is designed to reject sounds to the rear of the mic. The term cardioid comes from heart because when you draw the pickup pattern of the directional mic, it looks a little bit like a flattened heart shape with the dipping in coming at the back of the microphone. Directional mics are very useful when you want to reject the sound of the room in which you're recording or when you want to try to isolate one particular instrument, such as a soloist, from other nearby instruments. Directional mics can often produce punchier dynamics and are therefore sometimes preferred for the modern styles like jazz or rock. To start things off, I found a recording of a piano recital from last semester. It was Bach's Toccata in D major. Even though the recital recording utilized both a close set of mics and a distant set, I used only the signals from the close mics, just a few inches away from the strings of the Steinway D, and this would let me simulate a real sound source that would be both consistent and repeatable with a set of studio speakers. So I put a set of speakers on a stage in a 2,000 seat auditorium, and with the speakers about five feet apart, I played back the recording and I used different microphones to compare the patterns as well as placements. The first comparison is between a directional and omni mic in the same position. They're four feet apart from each other and about 15 feet from the speakers on the stage. The first part of the recording will consist of about 10 seconds of the dry source recording I used to simulate the piano. Then it'll switch over mid phrase to the directional mics at 15 feet. And then about 10 seconds later, it'll switch over to the omni mics in the same position. your speakers, the easier it will be to hear the differences. The most obvious difference between the directional and omni mics is probably the amount of room ambience captured. Here is another more exaggerated example, comparing both microphone patterns from a distance of 32 feet from the sound source. Of course, this isn't a real piano playing on the stage, and the studio monitors don't measure up to a Steinway D, but this does give you an idea of the differences between the two most common microphone patterns. The sonic character of this auditorium is probably not the best for piano either. However, the same bass recording was used for the introduction of this video, and now you can listen to it again as the outro with some artificial ambience provided by the reverb plugin Altiverb. Enjoy!